Have you got an estimate of how many he painted? I, I don't think the estimate of 10,000 is a, is a, I think it's quite a low estimate myself. Uh, it depends as well whether you talk about drawings as well. Watercolours. Yes. Uh, I would say there must be 10,000 watercolours, I would estimate. No, not 10,000 watercolours. Um, I, I mean, I've not, I, we absolutely don't we know. We don't know, but I think there's a lot of We absolutely don't know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, with paintings, I mean, how many were there? Uh, the painter were women, all the ones from those private studios. And the kids, there must have been a couple of we thousand. Have absolutely no idea how many paintings there are. Drawings, watercolours. I mean, so some, this, guy, uh, no this guy took all the catalogues for all the exhibitions, that guy, what's he called? The, psych the psychologist. Mm. The one that wrote that book on Robert, is he called the... Oh, Keith Nichols. Yeah, he, and he added all the numbers from the catalogues, and that came to 6,700. But, but that was, I'd say, 20th of what Robert produced. What was actually shown in, in the exhibitions were not, not what was the real output. It's the subject of a PhD in the future. <laughs> well, well, Robert, in our painting lessons, Robert, in just in one day, in demonstrations, may, may have produced five or six paintings in that one day with us. Uh, and these are paintings that were quick, some of them quite complex. One of them was in the Sotheby's exhibition. So the numbers could be astronomical with Robert. Um, we just don't know. But I don't think 10,000, I think it's a very low estimate, I think. I mean, I, d I don't know how far you want to talk about this, but how old were you when you met him and how did you meet him? Um, I um, was in my early 20s um, and I met him um, because uh, I'd organised a conference and he came to the conference and he left a message um, asking me to come and see him, which eventually I did. But um, I think that uh, I was um, I was always very um, charmed by by the work um, and, and by the ideas as well. And Robert was a very thoughtful um, painter. I, I guess maybe that quite a lot of painters are, but I don't know. I didn't know very many painters. Um, and the setting up of the Lenkovich Foundation arose um, partly. In, in that kind of a way, because we talked about the best way to keep a, um, try to preserve the books and try to preserve the paintings, to keep the um, project-oriented um, theme. So, hi oh, Richard. Hi. Um, so the, all of this is about it, it, is about that. It's not got anything to do with the fact that um, um, Robert and I um, had a relationship and had children. It's to do with my um, my role as a director of the Lenkovich Foundation and my wish to promote the aims and objectives of the Lenkovich Foundation. Right, I recognise this face from a, a painting downstairs. Can you tell me about it? Well, this is the bishop indulging his naked Robert's two superstar vagrants uh, who posed for Robert the most. They were most painted for indulging he lived with Robert for the last 10 years of his life. It's an amazing painting. It's based on the Holbein ambassadors with the skull in the middle. Um, oh, yeah. they're great. It's almost like the great portrait of Henry VIII with his arms outstretched. Uh, when this painting was being painted, the bishop, because, there's no, because the tramps have no intimacy in their lives, that they never sleep with women, they never have girlfriends, so they're very rarely touched. And every time Robert went to paint the bishop's penis, he got an erection. And it was like a massive problem. It took Robert weeks before he could finish this painting, because every time he went down there, and it was probably because the intimacy of being stroked, even though it was in a painting, having his penis stroked by the brush in the painting was the most intimate act that uh, they ever faced the tramps. I think it's uh, very rare, this kind of male portrait. You've got the Greek god-like god renaissance nude, 
the idea of the kind of average English chap, naked, warts and all, uh, he always reminds me of the country vicar, the bishop, makes it such an earthy, wonderfully freshly painted, and it's of the early period, so it's got a real boldness to it and vigour. His early work, and really, and the artist that comes to mind is Franz Howe's Always a Rembrandt, the swashbuckling brushstroke, Robert Paul and the fastest brushman of the West. And there is that kind of feeling of the brushstrokes in this painting. But it's wonderful that they both have these incredibly startling heads. Uh, yeah, I, I just think it's um, quite a rare image. And this was banned in the first time it was shown. Uh, and even in Hartlepool, people were offended by this picture. They wouldn't look at it. Even this, I heard people saying, I can't look at this. So even today, male nudity is still seen as quite sh shocking, and yet, to me, it's quite an affectionate portrait, an intimate one, you know, it's not, uh, it's not sexual, sexualised, it's not erotic in any way, it's, it is like two parsons almost going to the beach, that's what it reminds me of, I almost imagine them tying little, their handkerchiefs to their heads on this, uh, with their lunch boxes and, you know. <laughs>